Ah, uh, yo, film theory. Mario exposed the movie industry. Super Mario movie. I still have yet to watch this thing, bro. Can't find the time. Your boy been grinding these videos. You know what I'm saying? I will eventually. But well, let's go. The process of reviewing movies is broken. The system we expect to serve as a barometer for the quality of a film is not working the way we want. But while well, it's not working the way we want, it is working the way they want. You see, the review process may be broken, but the powerful people who broke it wanted to stay that way. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, the show that hides power-ups inside of bricks. Go ahead, hit that one and see what comes out. Ooh, you got the subscribe button. That one gives you big brain abilities. <laughs> Don't yell it. Well, you know what they say, knowledge is power. Yo. Ups. So at this point, do I even need to ask if you've seen the Mario movie? It's yes. been shaken loose so and much coin that you'd think you were suddenly in Wario Land. This thing is a mega mushroom-sized hit at the global box office, sitting at nearly one billion dollars. I was just gonna say I didn't want to I don't I didn't want to say it because I thought it like it probably wasn't the movie but I literally saw like two days ago that this shit a billion. There's in worldwide gross as I write this with Crazy. no signs of slowing down. This thing has put up such huge numbers that industry experts are even bumping up their projections for the entire year of cinema earnings just because of this one film. Jeez. Everyone is calling out the fact that this one movie has such a shocking overperformance. Which can we just be real here? Mario is more recognizable to children than Mickey Mouse. And people are surprised that a feature film True. from the marketing masterminds behind the Minions is doing well. Whoa, color me shocked, loyal theorists. Who could have seen this one? coming i'm like a surprised pikachu up in here but something that yeah, was yeah, yeah, a yeah. legitimate surprise to me and to the internet at large was the response from movie critics especially when compared to how different it was from all the normal people walking out of it as of the writing of the script just 59 percent of critics on rotten tomatoes scored this one positively planting it in the rotten category and i just gotta say that does not track with the movie that i saw was the mario right. movie i heard perfect? it was good by any means no <laughs> clearly not i was pretty upfront in my last theory acknowledging the weak pacing the poor character motivation and the fact that the soundtrack is just like the director forgot to turn off his Spotify playlist. But just listen to some of these reviews. Quote, the whole package is a deranged mishmash, an assault on the senses with a subpar animation style. The Super Mario Brothers movie is the Illumination style done at its absolute worst. Okay, the absolute worst? Are you sure about that? Meanwhile, the <laughs> audience reception sits comfortably at 96% positive, much closer to what seems to be the consensus from all us lowly normies and other armchair reviewers on YouTube. I don't know what the movie critics watched, but it certainly wasn't this film. This is not right. by any means a bad movie. I am kind of surprised. Literally, bro, and it's like those people uh, critiquing the movie, do they get paid to talk shit on it or give their opinion on it? You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it's all opinion, but like, if everybody's saying this shit came out nice to you it was ass all right that's fine you know what i'm saying eyes now to see these critic scores because i'm like how could you hate on this movie honestly i'm usually one to agree with the left side of the rotten tomato score but the critics are kind of going a little too hard on this one and it's that <laughs> division that really interests me with a 59 percent critic score Crazy. and 96 percent audience rating that means that the mario movie has a gigantic 37 point difference yep. why and why does it feel like this sort of gap between critic and audience has been increasing over the years over the past decade there are a ton of movies that were hits with the audience that just wound up as complete whiffs to critics. Some notable examples here, Nintendo's console war rival Sony has a lot of trouble in this category. Venom has a 30% with critics, but an 80% from yep. audiences. A and that movie I enjoyed, bro. That shit was nice. 50 point swing. Uncharted sits at 41% with critics and this 90% was nice too. audience approval. A massive 49 point difference. You know? The Greatest Showman, 29% divide. Netflix originals like The Gray Man, Red Notice, and Bright are 44. Red Notice was fired. 36 out of 92, bro. Like, see, sometimes it's Bright was nice too, bro. These are some good ass fucking movies. Is, is tomato is is Ryan Tomato like falling off or some shit? What's going on? Or is it the ones that talk shit end up there? Or 56 and 57 yeah, points swings that. respectively. Yeah. In every single one of these cases, fewer than half the critics recommend the movie, but more than 80% of the audience does. And it yeah. works both ways too. There are plenty of movies that critics loved, but audiences didn't. The Last Jedi, Ralph Breaks the Internet, Us, Hail Caesar, Uncut Gems. How does it Damn. I enjoyed us.
Yeah, I enjoyed us. 93 out of 60. Does this keep happening? Why does this keep happening? And it's not like critics and audiences don't agree most of the time. Top Gun Maverick, Avengers Endgame, Spider-Man No Way Home, John Wick Chapter 4, all recent examples that have critics and Very audience nice. scores in the 90s. Similarly, yeah. high scores can also be found with classics like Lord of the Rings, Gladiator, The Matrix. So is there any common feature here that we can find across the films that have this extreme division between critic and audience? Loyal theorists? Maybe the critics are just... They want to be so different and out of the... I was going to say out of out of the loop, but it's not that. They want to be so different and steer their opinions away from the general public, like the audience, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that they're willing to just downplay a, a film, right? Who knows? Maybe that's the case. You know, they don't want to fit in or seem like or sound like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? They always want to find that one thing that throws them off and it's like, oh, yep, this movie's ass. You know? This has been a subject that's been on my mind for literally shit perfect, years. Bro. And the fact that it's happened again with something as innocuous as the Mario movie has finally gotten me to look into it. After all, it kind of feels like critics and audiences watch two completely different Mario movies yeah. here. So what's going <laughs> on? Well, after looking into the history of reviews, I found evidence to suggest that there are some pretty powerful players in this game banking on the fact that there's a war between audience and critic. Much yeah. down those mushrooms, loyal theorists. We're entering the warp pipe. First, let's, let's set up go. the parameters of what we're actually talking about here. Rotten that. Tomatoes actually has very very specific rules and formulas for what makes a piece of media good or bad in their eyes. For both critic and audience scores, <clears throat> a good review is anything with three and a half stars or higher. If fewer than 60% of those reviews are good, a film is considered rotten. 60% or higher gets you a fresh rating. So with that in mind, let's talk about our two groups. The audience is exactly what it sounds like. Anyone who wants to voice their opinion about yeah. the film. That means it's a big group with a lot of different types of people in it. Shocking, I know. Meanwhile, there's some pretty strict criteria involved with Rotten Tomatoes approved Approving critics for their site. Basically, it boils down to frequent approving critics criteria involved with critics who wish to apply should first review our guidelines below. That's crazy. It's like criticism can be many things a deep dive into the filmmaking craft and analysis of subtext, a discussion on social commentary, audience, our intention is to reflect and represent the movie going and TV viewing audience with our tomato meter approved critics community. To cultivate a rich, varied, and inclusive space for engaging perspective and debate. That's crazy. They got they got rules and regulations and guidelines for you to state your opinion on something. Just for being a, cr a critic, you know what I'm saying? With Rotten Tomatoes approving critics for their site. Basically, it boils down to frequent quality criticism across written, video, or audio reviews. So, the regular person hopping onto Twitter or TikTok to share their hot takes as the credits roll ain't getting added to that side of the tomato meter. And that matters. According to career analysis website Zipia, film criticism in the United States has a pretty clear demographic. More than 80% are men, more than 67% are white, 90% of them completed some sort of college degree, they have a median Sheesh. age of 40 to 44. A lot of them 4044. 40, All right. They probably grew up playing Mario and shit, you know what I'm saying? Cool. Bro. I don't know about y'all, but like that's like I don't know. If I enjoyed something growing up and they dropped something that great, like like a movie on it, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be so hyped about it. You know what I'm saying? But like, I don't know. I feel like I'd be more open minded than usual. When watching a movie, you feel me? Because it is something that I'm very interested in. And I was, I grew up watching and playing or whatever the case, right? And it's like, y'all have played Mario. Probably all the damn games. You know what I'm saying? And like, I don't know. Maybe they went in expecting too much when watching the film could be i don't know also live in larger cities especially ones heavily involved in filmmaking like los angeles and new, new york. york obviously these traits don't define a person lived experiences are going to be far more important to a human being than what boxes they check for statistics but yeah. this is useful information setting yep. a tone for the majority of the reviews <clears throat> that are affecting the score rotten tomatoes must have agreed since in 2018 they tried to open up their roster of critics to a greater variety of sources but were ultimately met with a very limited degree of success so with all of this in mind it starts to become clear why there's a division here Think about the people in the audience review section. Is there anyone from a single NASA employed rocket scientist with five kids to a C average high school student wanting to gentle minion with the boys? And yep. all of those voices are treated equally. Yep. Meanwhile, I think everyone can come up with a rough idea of the stereotypical critic. Ratatouille hit this one up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't yeah. like food. I love it. If I don't love it, I don't 
Swallow. But why would that see? They they just they 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 hard headed a little bit. You're not saying they expected too much or they expect too much impact the split we see here know. between those critics and audiences on the Mario movie. Well, I suspect that a lot of it comes down to expectation. When you have a specialized group yeah. of people that are so similar, like critics, they're likely going to have specific expectations about what they want out of something. And in the case of the Mario movie, and other divisive films like it, seems like the reviews kind of miss the point. The Mario nope. movie is a kids movie aimed unapologetically at a kids audience. Yeah. Universal and Nintendo want kids to be the people who want to see this film most. It Again, going back to what I said, they're 40, 44, let's say, right? Most of them. Y'all grew up playing the games, watching different things, seeing different things, the toys they sell, the merch, and all that bullshit, right? You know what? You love Mario. Who doesn't love Mario? You know what I'm saying? You most likely love Mario. You feel me? You kind of, you should have kind of expected them to go this route with the movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, like kids love Mario, adults love Mario, senior citizens love Mario, the dead people probably love Mario, you know, same type shit. Yep, hey, 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 come on, bro, who hates on Mario? I've never heard of one person say, oh, I don't like Mario. Like, what? wants to be the first movie that you saw in theaters for an entire generation of kids while also being good enough for the adults that take them it is not yep. trying to be a masterpiece it is trying to introduce kindergartners to the idea of movies and in that role it works great but that's yep. also not what a lot of other modern animated films are trying to do look at the lego movie puss in boots into the spider verse those are animated films too to be sure but they're action comedies with grown-up ideas that have the yeah. coat of kids movie paint slapped on top stuff that oh. would likely appeal more to that college educated middle-aged critic but the Mario movie? It's not pretending to be a kid's movie. It is a kid's movie. <laughs> Mario's biggest problem as a character is pretty basic hero's journey stuff. Learning that he needs to believe in himself and his abilities. Oh, he also needs to eat his vegetables like Moss said so he can grow big and strong. Mushrooms aren't vegetables, obviously, but you get the idea. The long and short of it is that Mario's a lot closer to something like the Paw Patrol movie, but it seems yeah. like critics went in expecting it to be Pixar levels of story. Or at yeah, least bro. that was my initial hypothesis. But when I looked for evidence to confirm that suspicion, it didn't quite pan out. Because when you look at other kids' fodder, like Despicable Me, Sing, Kung Fu Panda, the Paw Patrol movie like I just called out, all of their scores match critic to audience. Even on things considered rotten like Minions, audiences and critics agree it was trash, but they still are going to show it to the kids anyway. So yeah. what was it about the Mario movie specifically that caused this divide? Well, to see if I could actually spot any trends here, I pulled a bunch of movies that had a 20 percentage point or more difference in either direction. Those where the audience scores were higher included the Mario movie, obviously, that's why we're here. Also the ones that I mentioned at the top, Venom, Uncharted, Greatest Showman, yeah. Greyman, Man, Red Notice Bright, but also a lot of things that I haven't mentioned yet. Stuff like most Fast and Furious movies, Hillbilly yep, yep, Elegy, yep. Boondock Saints, Hotel Transylvania, the live-action Lion King remake, Maleficent's 1 and 2, Ghostbusters Afterlife, the live-action Cats, data didn't specify if it was the one with or without the buttholes, and basically every Transformers <laughs> and Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> movie ever. Oh, and uh, I can't forget Morbius 2, Return to Morbin Time. On the other end of the spectrum, the movies that critics liked that audiences didn't included Ralph Breaks the Internet, Uncut Gems, Turning Red, The Last Jedi, Us, and Hail Caesar. Notice any trends here? Because I certainly do. Let's pull them out by group because I can actually see a handful of things all at work here. First, very clearly the critics don't appreciate mindless action. That's why all the Pirates, Transformers, and Fast mm. and Furious films are in these buckets. The Netflix action movies, even comic book movies like Venom. They're not very deep, they're largely formulaic, but they're also fun. They do action, and to be fair, many of them do the action well. And sometimes yep. as an audience, you just want to turn your brain off and let a movie wash over you. You want to be entertained. Critics appear to be the exact opposite. They're bringing notepads. They're scouring every frame. Their brain is running over time because it's in work mode. They just can't let a movie <laughs> wash over them and enjoy it for what it is. They're trying to find something constructive to say yeah. about every single movie that they watch every single week. And when all the movie does is just tick a bunch of boxes instead of offering something different, well, that's going to lose points for the critic who watched a similar movie last week, the week before yeah. that, and the week before that. Treating movies as just an amusement park ride is just not as effective for the critic. Secondly, looking at this list, critics don't don't seem to understand the humor and sensibilities of the internet. Cats, Morbius, I mean, we all know why you're here. You are the so bad it's fun to watch crowd. I saw Cats in a rowdy Friday night theater with a group of kids in front of me who kept meowing at the screen, and let me tell you, it was the best cinema experience of my life. Nah. Come to this place for magic.
Yep, you're right, Nicole Kidman. I do come for the magic. The magic of the Taylor Swift fangirl sitting next to me during that cat's showing, shouting at the screen 40 minutes in, Where's Taylor? It was awesome. <laughs> the entire audience erupted. Hell nah. But to a critic, they're Shut not appreciating up, movies boy. ironically. They're not dressing up like a gentle minion like the rest of us. <laughs> they're not waiting for Jared Leto to morb all over that hey, screen. Yo. And as a result, those movies get lower scores. On the flip side of that, though, look no further than Ralph Breaks the Internet. A movie that got higher critical scores than audience scores because despite trying its best to riff off the humor and sensibilities of online meme content, it did it in the most Google, Amazon, Jiffy, Buzzaholic, Pigtopia. Hey, <laughs> I like that. Normie way possible. <laughs> Online communities can see through that thin attempt to cater to them, which results in lower overall scores. Lastly, and this is perhaps the biggest disagreement between the two camps, critics don't respond to nostalgia and familiarity, while audiences clearly eat it up. Ghostbusters Afterlife- for what? Like, how don't you- you know what I'm saying? Respond to nostalgia and familiarity. Well, audiences I would. Eat it I would. Ghostbusters lie. Afterlife, it's fun. It's enjoyable. But it's also not a 94% positive movie. But audiences love the fact that it felt just new enough. You got old favorites, you got recreations of classic moments, but with new enough faces and plot lines. Maleficent and Maleficent 2, movies that began as a familiar and beloved fairy tale, except told with a new twist. It's safe, it's nostalgic, but also just a little bit new. That Lion King remake, despite its quality, it's the movie equivalent of a one way trip to nostalgia. Town. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. It's not great, but audiences were clearly happy to revisit a fictional world that they hadn't seen in a while. And now, just take a look at the flip side. What do critics like that audiences don't? Things that feel too new, do things too differently, are a bit too far of a departure, or that may be good, unique ideas that maybe don't fully come together in the end. To the critic who sees a movie at least once a week, they're placing premiums on things that are interesting. The Last Jedi is a perfect example of this, where audience reviews on Rotten Tomatoes focus on it not feeling like Star Wars, or the characters not not behaving in ways that they would expect, the critics praise the movie for shaking things up, trying to do new things, taking the franchise in new directions. Turning Red is another one that falls into this bucket. It's a Pixar movie that most parents would take their kids to thinking it's gonna be a good time killer for the family. But then you have scenes about periods and pads, and suddenly the room with your kids turns a bit awkward. Oh. I have ibuprofen, vitamin D, a hot water bottle, and pads. You are a woman now and your body is starting to change. To a critic, that's brave and necessary storytelling about topics that don't get screen time. To the parent who is looking to kill some hours with their kid, that's an uncomfortable conversation on the way. Yeah, sometimes films be throwing in too much shit. I mean, I, I feel like the best example would probably be Velma. Uh, I did hear a lot of people, like, obviously talk about their opinions and shit and on it and how, like, it was just, like, throwing a little bit too much into the 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 show you know what i'm saying i don't know but Hey. Home from the movies. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying it's the truth and it's going to affect your score. Now take all of that information and look at the Mario movie. It is all of these things rolled up into one. It's mostly pretty colors and fun action with a pretty thin plot. It caters to online communities and gaming scenes that critics yes. don't typically engage with. And it's speed running its way through tons of Easter eggs and nostalgia bait. This movie is basically everything that critics don't like all in one convenient package. So I think that's a pretty good explanation for what's going on with this divide between audiences and critics as it relates to movies like Mario, but I'm still not entirely satisfied with the answer. Like, sure, maybe that's how it's happening, but why is it happening? And more importantly, why does it keep happening? This disparity yeah. between critics and audiences is a big enough issue, and it happens often enough that it's been on people's radars for at least a decade now. You would think at this point we would have figured some way to sort this out. I mean, yeah. shouldn't we all be on the same side here? Audiences ideally get valuable information about movies before spending time and money on them, and critics need someone to be reading or watching their reviews for their jobs to exist. So why would critics versus audiences even be a thing unless someone was benefiting from sustaining this conflict. Stick with me here, this is relevant, I promise. The whole idea of review aggregators like Rotten Tomatoes can trace their way back to basically a single place. A show called At The Movies, presented by a pair of critics named Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert. Their whole shtick was that in lieu of scores, they'd both issue movies a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Not only was it an entertaining show presented by a pair of knowledgeable guys talking about their capital O movie opinions, but over the years, audiences got to know Siskel and Ebert's personal tastes, to the point that that they could even tell from a glance what sort of movie they were getting into depending on the direction the thumbs pointed. This was mm. great for consumers, allowing them yeah. to get a clear and concise way of getting the broad strokes on a film's quality. But for the studios, it was even better. The marketing value of this cannot be overstated. If a movie managed to get these two to agree that it was good, that was huge. Overall, yeah. this system was a win-win for I felt that.
You know what I'm saying? I know a, a friend, uh, he does re uh, movie reviews and show reviews, I think, on uh, on YouTube. You feel me? And if he says it's bad, I'm not watching it type shit. You know what I'm saying? Everyone, during a time if it's good, I'm watching didn't it. didn't travel at the speed of the internet, and it kind of sounds like what Rotten Tomatoes is supposed to be in the modern day, right? Let me just see how good or bad a movie is at a glance. There's a problem with how Rotten Tomatoes handles things. Back when it was just two guys on TV, it was easy to keep up with their opinions and figure out how they thought. But now there are thousands of critics with followings across a lot of different platforms. And in scaling up so much, adding so many people to the process, literally hundreds of critics in most cases, well, you start to lose the new nuance of the individual opinion. No longer do you think, oh, Roger Ebert liked this thing? I liked the other things he recommended, so I'm gonna like this one too. Now the individual thoughts are basically stripped out of the process, flattened down and combined with everyone else's until all you see is a number. Sometimes yeah. it's gonna be a big number with a tomato next to it, sometimes it's a small number with a green little slime next to it. Throw in audience reviews, now you got yourself two numbers. And would you look at that? If they're both big, you have the new version of two thumbs up. Everyone loves the film, and you as a moviegoer should go see it immediately. Yeah, and if yeah, they don't yeah. Yeah. Well, now you've got yourself some conflict, and the suits at all the ad agencies have really been able to twist this one to their advantage. Marketing loves a good conflict narrative. Coke versus Pepsi, Apple versus Android, Xbox versus PlayStation. But what they love even more is how these conflicts get consumers to self-sort into neat and tidy boxes so they're even easier to market to. It's been happening mm. forever. So if you end up with a film that critics aren't feeling but audiences are, the studio can then turn around and say, the critics don't like our movie, but so what? Our movie is for you, the average Joe. And that could do wonders to create a passionate <laughs> fan base. An us versus them narrative. Yep. You know how ads will sometimes just pull quotes from all sorts of different reviews? Critics agree. The Avengers is a must-see yep. movie event for everyone. It's gonna be fun. Well, when Batman That's true, bro. Like, like, I've always thought of that. How are they? How are these movies getting ratings off for it before it even goes public? Or it's dropped for in, in, in uh, theaters, right? Is it that these cr critics are watching these movies before? They go public, or is that all just a lie? They just throw that in there to get the people to come watch it. You know what I'm saying? Superman bombed with critics and at the box office, the film's official account started tweeting out what looked to be press quotes attributed to random Twitter users with the text, see it for yourself. And once you know it, but the Mario movie is now doing the exact same thing. They're leaning in hard on the audience score, tweeting a web spot saying just, the audience has spoken. And it's getting the intended effect. Literally, the number one reply to this thing is, exactly, <laughs> we don't care about critics' opinions. Either way, pretty much know. everyone with actual money invested in this thing comes out a winner. Nintendo and Universal have a movie that fans start defending in a surprisingly long-legged discourse critics and content creators can write articles and make videos like this one actually yeah, yeah, yeah. discussing why critics <laughs> are or aren't wrong and rotten yeah. tomatoes gets clicks and traffic as people go to look up the scores defend their opinions on the title review it themselves and the whole website brand becomes part of the conversation all without getting dragged through the mud because they're the middleman or are they really the neutral middleman if you really want to start getting into the conspiracy theory of it all do you know who actually owns rotten tomatoes like the actual company that runs the website it's fandango media a movie ticket retailer and that makes yeah. a lot of sense you go to see how a film's being reviewed and if it catches your fancy hey here's a link to buy the ticket right there at the bottom of the rotten tomatoes page not a big deal right but if you go one step further up that corporate ladder fandango media is jointly owned by warner brothers discovery and nbc universal who between them own all of this i'm not Jeez. saying anything but isn't it interesting that one of those companies just released an animated kids film based on a popular video game that has wildly different reception from critics and audiences thereby driving this very conversation and that the mario yep. movie is literally just one point on the rotten side for the critics not so bad that it looks terrible but just enough to fuel discourse in the community and episodes like this like i said that bro these animations are so dull bro w added in it's taking it to an extreme but i'm just putting that little nugget of information out there for consideration so what do we do here loyal theorists how do we do better well Ooh, i don't think the answer is to never pay attention to reviews nor do i think it's to take the audience's word as gospel instead i think it's to take both of these things into account as i've shown here today numbers can tell you a lot data is a great True. way to visualize a story but listen at the end of the day it's all opinions for real bro you know what i'm saying and like let, let's let's let me ask this now if somebody was asking you your friend or a critique a critic if a critic or your friend was asking you i mean was telling you how the movie was right i feel like most people will listen to their friend you know what i'm saying because they obviously have that connection with uh with that person instead of with the uh, the critic you feel me at the end of the day it's all opinions though but rarely is it the whole story. For me, I'm a firm believer in finding and then following film reviewers whose personal... Hey, yo. Rarely is it the whole story. For me, I'm a firm believer...
How you good movies, Mr. Boyd? Mr. L. Boyd, that man do movie reviews too? I didn't know that. ...and finding and then following film reviewers whose personal tastes largely align with your own. Personally, I love the more casual reviews of Jeremy Johns, the cinematic sensibilities of Chris Stuckman, and the overall industry coverage of Dan Merle, all right here on YouTube.com. Is Chris Stuckman sometimes a bit too artsy for my taste? Yeah. Is Jeremy sometimes a bit of an apologetic fanboy for franchises? Absolutely. Does Dan Merle... Well, actually, to be honest, I don't have a lot of complaints with Dan. I usually really agree with his perspective. If anything, he sometimes hedges his opinion a bit too much. Anyway, between these three, I feel confident knowing that I'm in good hands, getting a solid, yeah, yeah, yeah. well-rounded review from three professionals looking at a movie all through their own unique lenses. And from there, I'm then empowered to draw my own conclusions. There are dozens of incredible reviewers just like them here on YouTube. If you have some of your favorites that deserve attention, please, please, please call them out down in the comments below so I and everyone else can go and check them out. And as always, my friends, remember, it's all just a theory. A I'm film theory. theory. And cuts. Yeah, no. Oh man, listen, I hear good shit about the movie. I'm gonna go watch it just because of that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, not just because of that. That's one thing why I wanna watch it. I wanna watch it because it's fucking Mario, bro. Who doesn't love Mario? I'm not saying. I like someone as huge as Map Hat mentioned in Pointless Hub, Jeremy Jens, Chris Stuck, Stuckman, Moist Critical, and Cosmo Not. It's nice knowing dope creators fuck. Fuck with other dope creators. Yeah, bro. Showing that love is always important, man. That's dope. You know? That's always a dope, uh, a good thing. But, uh, yeah. Listen, all opinions at the end of the day. You know, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. That's It's simple as that. You feel me? But with the, the critics and their rating, like, like, bro, it's, what was it? It was like 59 to, 59 to 90, 96. Right here, 59 to 96 rating, bro. Like, that's just crazy. Let me know what you guys thought. That's my reaction. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe if you haven't. And I'm out.